so close to perfect, but he had. Number one. Theoretically, Kirishima knew Bakugo was popular. The guy's already got consistent media coverage and a considerable fan following, after all, and their class hasn't even graduated yet. Though, they might as well be, since they're out in the city more than they are in class these days. Kirishima hasn't talked to his friends for more than ten minutes in, like, a week. But he's sure seeing them on the news a lot. It's cool as hell. But he kind of misses them. Which is why he goes looking for Bakugo one fine Saturday morning, only to find him standing outside the dorms with a girl. As she says, I like you. Please go out with me. Kirishima's first thought is, Oh my god, I need a picture of his face. Because the scowl on Bakugo's face is truly, magnificently hilarious. His second is, Why didn't I realize people could have crushes on him? Okay, he doesn't mean it like that. Of course, people might find Bakugo attractive. Objectively, he is. Kirishima's own first impression of him was along the lines of, Oh, he's sort of pretty in a super intimidating way. But after three years of knowing him and watching him rage quit Mario Kart, having someone confess to him in the most cliche way is like seeing a chimpanzee do the electric slide or something. Theoretically possible, but really baffling to see it happen. Like, this is Bakugo, after all. What did this girl think was going to happen? No. Bakugo grunts. Exactly. The girl's expression falls. Kirishima shifts on his feet, glancing away awkwardly. He considers hiding behind a bush, but he feels like if he moves, they're going to spot him. Well, they probably already did. His hair's bright red, and he's wearing a purple shirt with pink lightning strikes all over it. Maybe if he just turns around and waits for them to finish. No, that's weird as hell. What is he, a bugged NPC? Please! She steps forward, reaching for Bakugo's hand. Just, just one date. We'll have fun, I'm sure. I'll change your mind. Bakugo snatches his hand out of her grasp, scowl morphing into a snarl, temper unleashed. Which is fair, because, damn, not cool. A no is a no. Fuck no. Get out of my sight, you're pissing me off. But the girl does not take a hint. She tries to grab him again, as if she's desperate for contact, and suspicions start forming in Kirishima's head, incidents with touch-based quirks on the field coming to mind. So he hurriedly bounds down the steps of the dorms, barreling into Bakugo and slinging an arm around his shoulders. The girl's fingers graze uselessly along Kirishima's shirt. Babe! Kirishima says, his smile blindingly airheaded. There you are. You didn't wake me up. Did you go out on a run already? I thought I said I'd come with you. Bakugo turns his head slowly, fixing him with a blank stare. Kirishima cranks up the smile, leans into his best friend dopily. Please play along. He begs internally. Even as part of him muses, there's a 50% chance he'll just kill both of us on the spot. Ejiro, says Bakugo. Okay. Hiroshima's mind squeaks. Okay. This is happening. You were tired last night. 
I didn't want to wake you. Bakugo continues in this weirdly calm tone, so at odds with his growling not even five seconds ago. It's noticeably soft for him. Kirishima's cheeks pink in on their own. Who are you and what have you done with my boyfriend? He teases. Heart beating way too fast, what the heck? You're not normally this sweet. Bakugo clicks his tongue, shoving him away by the face. Fine. See if I ever make you breakfast again. Oh, don't be like that. I was just joking. Come on. What did you make today? Is it in the fridge? Can I go eat it now? Christ, you drive me insane. Bakugo grouses. It's just rice and fish, yes. It's in the fridge. No, you can't eat it anymore because you're ungrateful and I hate you. Kirishima hooks his chin on Bakugo's shoulder, pouting. Uh, that's not what you said last night. Bakugo chokes. Kirishima grins. Man, Bakugo's so fun to tease. The girl that Kirishima nearly forgot was there, whoops, haha, <laughs> clears her throat. You have a boyfriend. Nobody told me you were taken, she says doubtfully. Bakugo just looks at her. You're still here. It takes all of the willpower Kirishima has to not outwardly react to that jab. Crap, Bakugo is hilariously mean. Poor girl. He'd feel bad if she actually knew how to take a rejection. Hi. Yeah, he's taken, he says, injecting himself into the conversation. I'm Kirishima. Nice to meet you. I hope I didn't interrupt anything. The girl's face sours. But I kind of need this guy for a study date, <laughs> so please excuse us. Once the door closes behind him, he sags against it with a sigh. He releases his hold on Bakugo, idly registering the heat of his skin. His waist is kind of slim, huh? Neat. Why'd you do that? Bakugo asks. Kirishima holds up his hands. Look, I know you could have handled it, but... It was getting kind of painful for me to watch, dude. Bakugo coughs his shoulder. No, you idiot. The boyfriend excuse. Really? Warmth fills Kirishima's cheeks. He huffs. I just woke up, okay? Brain's not exactly firing on all cylinders. Bakugo studies him for a long second, a strange expression on his face. Just as Kirishima begins to sweat, thinking Bakugo might be madder than he thought, the guy says, So your first instinct was to call me babe. Kirishima squeaks, lurching forward on some instinct to clap his hands over Bakugo's mouth. D don't say it! <clears throat> Bakugo grabs his wrists, yanks them away. And why the fuck not? It it sounds weird coming from you. Bakugo narrows his eyes, mouth curling. Oh, you're embarrassed? Am I embarrassing you, babe? Kirishima's face flares crimson. The hell? Why does Bakugo sound so. so ugh. Why is Kirishima so flustered, first of all? He tries to shake off Bakugo's hands, but it's useless. Bakugo doesn't budge. Dude, stop playing. 
he laughed nervously. Come on, I'm hungry. Let me get breakfast before we start sparring or whatever. Sp sparring, huh? Bakugo leans in, smoking like he smelled blood. Kirishima hardens instinctively, pulling back as far as Bakugo's grip will let him, which isn't very far at all. Shivers break over his skin where warm breath lands. He feels like he's about to get a chunk ripped out of his neck. But all Bakugo does is pause, their noses an inch from each other, and stare. Kirishima goes cross-eyed, meeting his eyes. His heart pounds. He licks his lips for some reason. Bakugo's hands fall away, and he steps back, wearing that odd look again. Kirishima doesn't know what to make of it. Breakfast, he says, and then a study date, like you said. We're doing chemistry today. With that, he turns away and heads for the kitchen leaving Kirishima slumped against the door, wondering what the hell just happened. Study date. He blushes. Yeah, he brought this on himself, really. Two. A couple days later, Bakugo turns to him at lunch, goes, Open your mouth, and then feeds him part of his homemade bento. Kirishima chews, puzzled. Thanks? It's good. Bakugo grunts, bringing up a piece of tamagoyaki to Kirishima's mouth. On your three o'clock. Immediately, Kirishima's mind shifts onto the field. His eyes dart over, mind tense, body relaxed but throbbing for a fight, for an enemy. But where he expects to see villains, there's just students. Students eating, talking, laughing, staring right at him and Bakugo. Oh. It's the girl. Hiroshima hums around a spoonful of pickled veggies. Bakugo pulls back, scoops some for himself, and eats it off the same spoon. Hiroshima will process that later. She's still bothering you? He asks quietly, shuffling closer and offering his juice box to Bakugo. Bakugo shrugs, leans in and takes a sip, right from his hand. Fucking staring at me, isn't she? You gonna do something about it? Boyfriend? Hearing him say that is just as bad as hearing him say babe. Kirishima wonders if he should start a blacklist for things Bakugo should never say. It'd get him beat up, but still. Of course. Anything to help a bro. Bakugo snorts. Just get on with it. Part of Kirishima wonders why Bakugo's still okay with playing out his rushed lie from last time. He's got to have at least three better ideas to dissuade her, right? A greater part of him, however, is more concerned with tilting Bakugo's chin with a finger and ducking in to drop a light kiss to the swell of his cheek to bother thinking hard about it. Thanks for the food, he says, lips brushing soft skin. Bakugo grunts and leans into him, 
slouching so his head brushes Kirishima's shoulder. Kirishima lifts his arm, and Bakugo immediately snuggles in, pulling Kirishima's arm around him. Man, Bakugo's a good actor. He makes it look so effortless. It's not exactly the most comfortable of positions, but Kirishima finds he doesn't actually mind it. Weird. Bakugo pushes his bento over. Eat, he commands, snagging a piece of Kirishima's fish with his chopsticks. Oh, thanks. Your cooking is seriously good, you know. Of course I know. I'm the one cooking it. Yo, Kachan, Denki pipes up, eyebrows wiggling. Can I have some loving homemade food, too? Bakugo flips him off. Fuck no. Oh, come on, you're playing favorites again? Maybe if you were better at eating, I'd give some to you. B better at eating? What does that even mean? Like, chewing? I can chew just fine. No, it means you're a sloppy eater, Saru says. Bakugo grunts approvingly. You got rice all over the front of your shirt, man. Kaminari looks down. He picks a grain off and pops it in his mouth. Kirishima's sloppy too, he protests, while still picking rice off his shirt to eat. <laughs> Not when Bakugo's feeding him, he isn't, Mina says. Stop eating your shirt, Rice Denki. It's weird to watch. Don't watch, then. You look like an ape picking off lice to munch on. How dare you! It just degenerates from there. At one point, Kaminari considers dipping his shirt in soy sauce, and Bakugo throws a spoon at him. A mild reaction for him, but there's not much he can do without leaving Kirishima's side. Towards the end of the lunch hour, Kirishima remembers who they're putting an act on for, and glances up. The girl's gone. He frowns. How long has she been gone for? When he looks down, it's to catch Bakugo's lidded gaze. His heart gives a single startled lurch. Bakugo sits back up, and Kirishima's entire side goes cold. He pulls his jacket tighter around himself, but the warmth's already gone. It's probably just because Bakugo runs hot. Don't you bother me any more, Bakugo mutters, packing up his bento. Uh, uh. Is it just Kirishima that feels something odd in the air? He thinks it was too abrupt, like he should have... should have played it to the proper end. Like he should have walked to class with Bakugo under his arm, finally parting at their desks, and only with... A, a, another kiss or something. But that's silly, because they're not together. Kirishima shakes himself. Come on, Ejiro. You're not a burgeoning actor or anything. Get it together. He was just helping a friend out, and now his job's done, so he can leave all this confusion behind him. It's only later that Kirishima will think to wonder why some of their friends had any questions about the cheek kiss and the food sharing. Number three. Mbakugo barges into his room. Kirishima, you're free today. Mbakugo does this thing, where he never asks questions like a normal person. 
Instead, he makes statements like he already knows the answer. And if he's ever wrong, and you correct him, he just clicks his tongue. It's kind of endearing, in a funny way. Not so much at 9am, though. Yeah, Kirishima replies blearily, rubbing the sleep from his eyes. Why, someone dying? I wish, Bakugo says darkly. Got a family gathering. You're coming. I am? Yes. You get free food and I get to use you as a buffer for nosy busybodies. Pretty sure some uncle's got puppies for you to play with. Don't make me sound like a dog on a playdate, dude. Kirishima groans, stretching hard enough to pop something in his back. But, yeah, I'll go. His bed dips. He peeks an eye open to see Bakugo sitting by his hip. The slice of sunlight drifting through the parted curtains paints him gold. His pale eyelashes are glowing. You gotta pretend to be my boyfriend again, though, he says. Kirishima squints. What? Why? I want to rub it in my stupid cousin's face. He made a bet I wouldn't have one by now because I'm horrible and stinky. You are stinky, Kirishima admits. But not like a bad stinky. And you were kind of horrible. But not really. You were horrible like the way a chihuahua is horrible. Bakugo stands. Never mind, I take it back. You can stay here and rot. I'll eat all the free food myself. Kirishima lurches up and grabs his wrist pulling him hard back enough to fall into Kirishima's chest. No, my food! I mean, I'm sorry, man. Let me come with. I'll be the best fake boyfriend for you. Your cousin will lose so hard, bro. I don't know. You're probably too busy stuffing your face to be any use to me. Kirishima whines, pushing into Bakugo and forcing them into bed. Bakugo turns his head away, acting like he can't see Kirishima. Bakugo, please, I promise, I'll hold your hand and give you kisses and everything. Hmm. Bakugo glances at him, and he cranks the puppy eyes up to eleven. Fine. You better sell this. I will. Kirishima grins. So... When is it? In an hour, says Bakugo, prompting Kirishima to choke on his spit. Dude, that's... When were you going to tell me? I'm telling you now, aren't I? I'm talking about advanced warning, Bakugo. Up, up, move, I need to get ready. What are we bringing for your parents, dude? I can't show up empty-handed. A melon, some flowers. You think I'm an idiot or something? Bakugo shoes him from the closet. Go brush your teeth. I'm picking your clothes today. We leave in 15. Uh, roger that. And they show up on time. Thankfully. Before they walk in, though, Bakugo holds out his hand expectantly. You said this was okay, he grunts. Oh. Right, he did say that. But now faced with the actual prospect, his heart is freaking out for some reason. Kirishima swallows, fingers slipping between Bakugo's. Yep, yeah, it's great. I mean, I don't mind. This is nice. Fine. It's fine. Bakugo raises an eyebrow. Good to know. 
He adjusts their hands, lacing them closer, which makes it even worse for Kirishima's circulatory system somehow, and goes to unlock the door. Kirishima surreptitiously slaps himself. Man, all the nerves about meeting Bakugo's extended family is getting to him. Pull it together, it's just a hand. It's Bakugo's hand, his mind says nonsensically. He decides he must still be tired from waking up so early. Kotsky! Mitsuki exclaims when they walk through the door. You actually came, you brat! Said I would, Bakugo grumbles, as she pulls him for a crushing hug. God, you grow more monstrous each day, hack. You're crushing my ribs. And you're as insufferable as ever, she says, pinching his cheeks. Her eyes light on Kirishima, trailing down to their joined hands. I see you brought Ejiro. Fucking duh. Kirishima smiles, offering the flowers and nudging Bakugo to do the same with the melon. Glad to see you again, Miss Bakugo. We brought stuff. Hope they're okay. Oh, they're perfect, she coos. Here, just put it over here. It's good to have you over. It's been a while since I saw my favorite son, and we all know I'm not talking about Kartsky. Kirishima squeaks. Does she... him? He's the favorite? Fucking hag. Bakugo hisses. I told you not to... God, you're embarrassing! Oh. Did Bakugo tell them about the fake dating? Kirishima exhales. Okay, that makes sense. She's just playing the part. I nearly gave him a heart attack. Jeez. Mitsuki rolls her eyes. All right, all right, my bad. Go say hi to your dad. I'm going to steal Ejido from you. Go on, shoo! Bakugo glares at her, reluctantly pulling away. You better not scare him off. You act like you haven't had him over before. He knows me, brat. Now get going. She hooks her arm around Kirishima's, pointing him into the living room. It's not you, it's the fucking extras you're going to introduce him to. Bakugo yells at their backs. Don't call your family extras, idiot son. Mitsuki hollers over her shoulder. Kirishima bites back a smile. The Bakugos are always so lively, huh? He's kind of excited to meet everyone else. I hope it's okay that Kartsky brought me along, he says. Mitsuki gives him an incredulous look. You kidding? I'd drag him over myself if he didn't. You're welcome here any time, kiddo. And the rest of the family have been dying to meet the guy Kartsky won't shut up about. Kirishima blinks. Damn. Is Bakugo preparing for this moment for that long? He's always one step ahead, isn't he? When they step into the living room, it's packed full. Blonde everywhere he looks. Looks like it's Mitsuki's side of the family. That's, well... Here's to hoping he comes out alive. Oh my god! One lady says gleefully, Red hair? Is this THE Kirishima? Just like that, a dozen heads whip around to stare. It's a little unnerving. So many Bakugos in so many different fonts. Wow. Kirishima bows, smiling brightly. Hi, it's really nice to meet you all. Thanks for inviting me. A beat of silence. Then, a guy sitting cross-legged by the TV sighs. 
Shit. I guess I owe the asshole money now. Mitsuki laughs, pulling Kirishima into the room and dumping him next to a buff man with a close-shaved hair. Some uncle, probably. I told you not to bet against my kid, Yota. I didn't think he was real, auntie, Yota groans. Kotsky made him sound too perfect. I thought he was imaginary. Kirishima blushes, sinks back into the couch. He's got a reputation to live up to now? Damn, Bakugo, what did you say? The uncle next to him cracks open a beer and hands it to him. You're going to need this. Kirishima stares at it like it's a bomb. Does he drink it? He's underage, but is he allowed to turn it down? Will Bakugo's uncle kick his ass if he does? Is this a test? Are they judging him for how worthy for Bakugo he is based on whether or not he drinks it? Another cousin leans in on his other side. Katsuki's told us so much about you, she says excitedly. He doesn't say much in the group chat, but once Yota egged him on, it was like he couldn't stop bragging about you. Is it true you once ripped up a tree with your bare hands? Uh, yeah, he stutters. But, but it wasn't... I, I didn't mean to. Oh, jeez, an older lady says. He's just as sweet as Katsuki said he was. She pauses. Grins. Oh my god, that's Bakugo's grin. This is, go this is going to be fun. Kirishima swallows. Looks like he's in for a ride. Kotsky! Kirishima gasps, stumbling into the kitchen. Help! Bakugo turns, hurriedly dropping the knife to the cutting board as Kirishima slumps over his back, whimpering. The hell happened to you? He asks, bewildered. Too many questions, Kirishima says, a voice muffled against his shoulder. His hands find purchase on Bakugo's hips, providing much-needed stability. His head is spinning. He whines when Bakugo's back starts shaking with repressed laughter. No, stop moving, dude. It's been ten minutes, Bakugo snickers. Are they too much for you, Unbreakable? Oh, it was like getting hit with fifteen howitzers one after another, babe. Come on. Kirishima raises his head. What are you guys making? Just some extra dishes, Masaru says, silent up until now. He's smiling at them, eyes glinting behind his glasses. Would you like to help? If it means I get to stay here, yes, he replies instantly, squeezing Bakugo once before letting go. Where do you need me? Masato directs him through a couple simple steps, mostly taking over for Bakugo with cutting stuff so he can man the stove. It's a nice break, and such a fascinating contrast to the atmosphere in the living room. Not as charged, but just as familiar. Warm. Kirishima's having fun, he realizes. Even when he was getting interrogated, he was having fun. Well, it's Bakugo, after all. Anything related to him, Kirishima is going to like. What are you smiling like that for? Bakugo brushes a knuckle to the edge of his mouth, expression wry. You snuck some curry when I wasn't looking, didn't you? Kirishima gasps. I'd never. You literally have it smeared all over your chin. 
What? Where? He slaps his hand to his face, wiping and checking his hands for incriminating evidence. It was only a little bit, just a taste. Did I get it? Bakugo's mouth twitches. I was joking. Oh. Hiroshima's face goes pink. Damn it, I've got to stop falling for that. Well, aren't you two sickeningly sweet? Mitsuki says, walking in with someone's kid on her hip. She gives her husband a slap on the butt, grinning when he sputters. Right, says Bakugo. Like that wasn't gross as hell to witness. Kirishima turns away, muffling a laugh. Bakugo elbows him with a grumble, muttering about embarrassing parents and family members and how he better not blackmail him with the stuff he's learned today, and Kirishima just holds him and presses a kiss to his temple. He shuts up. You have a really nice family, Katsuki, he says, smiling into his hair. Thanks for bringing me along. Bakugo is silent, ladle limp in his grip. Kirishima peeks down at him to see that his ears are pink. And suddenly, he realizes what he just did, and why he did it. Just because it wasn't for an audience. He just, his body just acted on his own, too full of some emotion, and he'd, he'd... So cute, Mitsuki sighs. Masaru nods, sending Kirishima a knowing smile. He clears his throat, stepping away to pick up the knife again. His heart beats triple time. He doesn't look at Bakugo. So, so, whose kid is that? Thankfully for his nerves, the rest of dinner goes smoothly, and he doesn't slip up like that again. Still, Kirishima is acutely aware of every action he takes from then on. Every brush of Bakugo's skin against his every touch they share under the guise of their relationship. It confuses him just a little. It makes him feel... He's not sure what it is, but he feels something. He sneaks a glance at Bakugo every now and again, but he looks as normal as ever, and it leaves Kirishima a little lost. He's a little glad when the day ends, though... He finds himself strangely missing the weight, feeling Bakugo's hand on his. Man, this fake dating thing is really messing with him. Number four. They're wandering down a random shopping district when Kirishima sees it. Opening promotion. Discounted parfaits for couples. Come in and ask us about it. Hiroshima jerks to a stop, grabbing Bakugo by the baggy seat of his pants. What the fuck? Dude, we have to go. Hiroshima says seriously. I need that parfait. So you grabbed my ass? Bakugo hisses. You don't even like that shit. There's a discount. Also, I grabbed your pants. Everything else you wear isn't half as grabbable as your pants, dude. You should probably fix that. What if they get caught on something one day and, like, de-pants you? You, Bakugo says threateningly, of all people, have no room to talk about my clothing sense to me. Okay, but can we go in? Hiroshima clasps his hands together puts on his best pleading face. Please, Bakugo! Please! Bakugo grimaces and pushes his face away. Fucking hold on. 
He squints at the promotional board, dissects the storefront with critical eyes. When he decides the place is up to his standards, he nods, holding out a hand for Kirishima to take. Might as well, he says. I'm already pros at this shit. Kirishima pumps a fist into the air. Hell yeah! He readies himself to answer basic questions to prove their eligibility, expecting to get interrogated when they walk in and ask about the promotion. He's going to ace this quiz so hard. He knows everything about Bakugo and everything else he could just spin off their friendship. Except the girl behind him at the cash register just smiles at them and says, I saw you guys out the window. Must have been together a while, huh? I know an old married type when I see one. Yeah? Bakugo snorts. Well, I'm about to divorce him for bringing me in here, so I guess that checks out. Kotsky? The girl laughs and points them towards a table in the corner, handing them two menus. That was easy. Yes, they really are pros. At fake dating, without consciously trying. Hmm. Bakugo wrinkles his nose. Gross. They've got a mayo parfait here. What the hell's in a mayo parfait anyway? Mayo, probably. Bakugo kicks him under the table. Hiroshima traps his foot between his own, hardening his shins when Bakugo tries wiggling out. Bakugo swears at him, but resigns himself to his capture soon after, muttering about how it's not worth the fight. Kirishima catches the girl giggling quietly behind her hand. They order a single mixed berry parfait, easily agreeing on sharing so they don't stray too long from their meal plans. It tastes pretty good, not too sweet, and the layers of fruit between the cream are refreshingly cold. At some point, Bakugo takes out his phone and starts reading the e-book of their English assignment, so Kirishima jokingly holds up a spoon of fruit and cream to his mouth. Astonishingly, Bakugo just opens up and lets Kirishima feed him. It's such a shock that Kirishima doesn't even get to tease him like he planned to. Bakugo glances up, mouth lifting at the corners. What? I, uh, nothing. Kirishima looks at the spoon. The spoon that he just slid between Bakugo's lips. The spoon that they've been sharing the whole time. Why is he just noticing that now? Um, I think we're done with the parfait. Do you want anything else? I'm good, Bakugo replies, sweeping a thumb over his bottom lip to wipe the cream off. He licks it clean. You? Huh? Kirishima blinks, rebooting. I mean, uh... Yeah, I'm ready to leave. Yeah. He wants to melt into the freshly polished pastel blue floor. What is wrong with him? It's just Barkgo. Sweaty, scaldy Barkgo. It's just them, hanging out. Just two guys, sharing a parfait and pretty much acting like normal, except for a couple extra touches here and there. Just him and Bakugo, barely needing to do anything more to convince people they're together. Totally normal. There's nothing to get flustered over. And yet, Kirishima finds himself blushing when Bakugo nudges him aside and pays for them. They leave the store, stomachs full. Somehow, 
Kirishima feels like he got more than he asked for. Number five. Riot! Amazing work out there today. Do you have time for a couple questions before you leave? Kirishima turns, flashing a tired smile. He takes in the camera aimed at him and the bright-eyed reporter and tries to muster up a bit of energy. His shift might have ended an hour ago, but a hero never really clocks out. Sure. He brushes dust and plaster from his arms, signaling to Sun Eater that he'll be over in five. What you got for me? The reporter clears his throat, bouncing on his feet. He must be new. The enthusiasm is endearing. What can you tell us about the villain you just took down? Not much beyond what you saw here, I'm afraid. Kirishima stretches out his arms, pulling them across his chest. They had a copper manipulation quirk, so that would have put a dent in the reconstruction costs if we hadn't managed to stop them before they ripped up more than the front of those two stores over there. Aha, uh -huh, the reporter says. His face is a little pink. Must be cold. It is nearing winter. Yes, I saw you take him down yourself. Can you give us insight on what your thought process was like? Yeah, sure. Kirishima gives them a rundown on their strategy. It's nothing mind-blowing, but the guy looks enraptured. It's a little embarrassing. Especially because Kirishima doesn't think today's fight warrants much more than a quick mention on the news. The rest of the reporter's questions continue along the same vein. Basic, but not completely boring. Hiroshima thinks with some humour that if Bakugo were getting these, he would have walked away by now. Well, thank you for your time, Red Riot. The reporter pauses. And just for the curious viewers out there who have been asking non-stop, what's your status right now? Hiroshima tilts his head. Status? Like, his hero status? Isn't it obvious he's active? Is this about his ranking? I'm sorry, I don't think I understand. The reporter locks eyes with him. Smiles shy. You know, like, if someone were to give you their number, would you take it? Oh! Oh, God, he's asking if Kirishima is single. And from the way he's staring, he's wondering if Kirishima will take his number. Um, I mean, that's... He scratches his neck sheepishly, eyes darting around for an excuse to escape. How does he answer this without embarrassing the guy? Crap. Fat Gum didn't prepare him for these kinds of questions. Aren't they usually reserved for heroes people actually find attractive anyway? Why is he getting them now? He's just a sidekick. There you fucking are, says a familiar voice. One that instinctively drains the tension from Kirishima's shoulders before he realizes who it belongs to. Bakugo. Kirishima turns to find him stepping in close. Scowl in place as he slugs Kirishima on the arm. The hell are you doing? Bakugo growls. We were supposed to get dinner after our shifts. I called you like a dozen times, Kirishima. What the fuck? Kirishima blanches because, one, Bakugo swore on TV again, and two, he totally forgot to tell Bakugo he'd be late. I got held up, man. I'm so sorry. I should have texted. Fucking right, making me wait. Bakugo mutters, something close to an actual pout on his face. So, you done here or what? Does he not realize... Kirishima bites back a laugh. He gestures to the camera. 
Sorry, just let me finish this up first. Bakugo blanks, like he just noticed it. Huh. Is that life? Y yes, it is, Dynamite, the reporter says, wide-eyed. <laughs> Do you want to say something to the viewers? Kirishima asks jokingly. Bakugo jostles him with his elbow and gives the camera a weighted look. Just hurry up. You're paying this time to make it up to me. Of course. But the reporter is already waving his hands and backing up. Oh, no, it's all right. We already have everything we need, really. No need to entertain us longer. You two must be starving. Thank you for your hard work today. Sorry to keep you right. Oh, okay, Kirishima says brightly. Inside, he breathes a sigh of relief. He really is hungry, and now he doesn't have to answer that awkward question. Get home safe. Bakugo's already pulling him away by the waist before he finishes talking the fabric of his jacket warm against Kirishima's bare skin. He's pretty hungry too, huh? You didn't have to wait for me, you know? Kirishima shifts them into a more comfortable position, since it doesn't look like Bakugo's going to stop marching them forward any time soon. He throws his arm over Bakugo's shoulders, flicking a stray leaf off his friend's head. I fucking know that, Bakugo says. Kirishima waits, but he doesn't say anything more. Okay. So, when'd you get here? I didn't even hear you. Of course you didn't. I walked up in time to see you nearly break your mind trying to answer that stupid question. Bakugo snorts. Thought I'd lend you a hand. Give you an excuse to leave. Kirishima turns to him, awed. Is that what you were doing? I totally thought you were just being needy again. He gets a slap on his head for that. Fuck off! I'm not needy! Bakugo sputters, cheeks puffing out in anger. More importantly... You should have just told him to get lost, Red. Don't be a pussy about it. He shoves a hand in Kirishima's softening spikes, scrubbing around and making him laugh and protest. I can't just tell people that. Being a rude stick of dynamite is your brand, not mine. Speaking of, you know you're going to get another meme made of you for interrupting my interview, right? Is this live? The camera was right there, Bakugo. I was trying to help you. Your sorry excuse for a stop spine. Ah, dude, stop! My hair's stuck in your jacket. Whose fault is that, huh? Yours! Needless to say, they take twice the amount of time to get food. Aizawa scolds them for coming back late, and Kirishima has to pretend it was because of an interview, and not because Bakugo kept goading him into a fight by flicking rice at him over the table. The day after, Kaminari tells him he trended for a bit, and teases him about some pictures got of him and Bakugo. Apparently, old rumours about them flared up again. He shrugs it off. The public's been weirdly attentive to them since first year, but he does spend a couple of minutes taking in the candid shots, taking in the image of Bakugo's arms wrapped tight around him, their heads dipped in together the slight curl of Bakugo's lips and Kirishima's answering grin. Bakugo's fingers skimming in his waistband, a thumb on his bare skin. Shots of them laughing, of Bakugo's bared teeth and rough affection there for everyone to see. Of Kirishima, looking comfortable under his touch, like he fits there. He never realized how this is what they look like from the outside. Close. Friendly. 
intimate. He wonders. Six. Bakugo kicks Kirishima's door open and stomps in. Go on a fucking date with me, he demands, throwing his clothes and towel in Kirishima's hamper, before throwing the covers back down and wiggling into bed. Is your cousin bothering you about proof again? Kirishima lifts his arm, letting Bakugo fit his head against his shoulder and tilting his switch so Bakugo can see the screen. I thought he was convinced after I sent that pic of you in my sweater. No, you idiot. Bakugo mumbles. He takes a deep breath. I mean, just for us. For real. I want to kiss you on the fucking mouth and shit. Oh, cool. Kirishima hums absently, moving his character to climb up a mountain. There's supposed to be treasure chests up here, and he really needs money to upgrade his armor? Wait. I wanna kiss you. His brain screeches to a halt. Hold on, he says. Did you just... Do you like me? Bakugo raises his head, expression blank. Are you fucking serious? Yes. Kirishima opens and closes his mouth, dumbfounded. When did this happen? Probably a while ago, but I didn't notice till recently, Bakugo says flippantly. I was hoping you'd get it by now without me saying anything, but that turned out to be hopeless, so I resorted to just confessing, like a loser. What? 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 Kirishima stares at him, frozen. His mind is a freeze frame, a record scratch, a whole YouTube rewind where he relives all the instances over the past couple of months where Bakugo's been more affectionate. Mostly when they were pretending to date for various reasons. He then remembers how Bakugo was the one to instigate most of it. How he'd act so satisfied after. Was that... Was that him trying to hint at it? Because that's the most confusing way to make your feelings known that Kirishima has ever heard of. So, Bakugo asks, Do you like me back or what? Like him back? Does he like Bakugo back? What is that? What does it mean to like someone? Is it, like, does he like Bakugo in the way where he'd want him to use Eijiro instead of Kirishima, only to get shy when he does? Is Bakugo asking him if he likes him in the way where he'd want them to hold hands? Where it'd get his heart racing and make his face flush? Make him sad when Bakugo lets go to open a door or, or to pay for their meal again? Does he like Bakugo enough to go out with him when they have time in their busy schedules, eager for the moment together, to go to the arcade and win prizes for each other, to go rollerblading just to push each other over? Does he want to share food at a restaurant, or help him cook in the shared kitchen, washing dishes side by side and liking how their arms brush? Does he like Bakugo in the way that he drag him over to his room after they've brushed their teeth and showered. Their clothes thrown in the same hamper because they share clothes often enough that it's less of a hassle to just do laundry together these days. And ask him to sleep over. Just tonight. Only to end up sharing a bed every night. Does he want Bakugo like that? Want him enough to keep him like no one else has ever gotten to? Is that what it means, to like someone? Because, if so, if that's what Bakugo's asking, then 
then you know what Hiroshima says thoughtfully I think I've liked you this whole time too and I think we're kind of already dating Bakugo lays his hands over Kirishima's chest, props his chin there, red eyes warm under his constant frown. Yeah. Kirishima sighs. You knew, didn't you? About the dating thing, sure. We weren't exactly being just bros, Bakugo says dryly. But the feelings things was... I mean, I hoped you would, but you're the type to be really fucking friendly. I couldn't tell with you. So you decided to test the waters by stealth dating me, Kirishima concludes. Bakugo flushes. Fuck off. At least I didn't have to get someone to jumpstart my feelings for me. Yeah, that's surprisingly emotionally mature of you. Ow! Don't hit me! You barely felt that, you overgrown toddler. Kirishima squishes Bakugo's round cheeks in his hand, huffing a laugh when Bakugo nips at his fingers with a growl. So, where do you want to go for our first actually aware we're dating date? Hiking, Bakugo says promptly. Christmas break. We're camping up there for a night. Got some stuff for stargazing and shit. That's kind of romantic, dude. Bakugo chomps down on his hardened thumb. That's the point, fucker. Kind of reminds me of first year, though. Kirishima closes his eyes. Oh my god. We were dating in first year. Bakugo pauses. Huh. Guess we were. Is this why no one's batted an eye at their recent fake dating antics? That makes so much sense, Kirishima thinks despairingly. How did it take them three years to get here? How is that possible? Their friends are going to laugh themselves into comas when they find out. You can already see it. Well, at least they made it, in the end. Better late than never. Hey, you might think this was lame, but... Thanks for confessing, Hiroshima says. Because it probably would have taken me a year to realize what we were, otherwise. He's not even joking. How sad is that? What kind of getting-together story is this? His mums are never going to stop teasing him about this. On second thought, maybe he just won't tell anyone how it happened. That's cause you were too nice to think about what you were letting me get away with, Bakugo grunts, brushing the hair from Kirishima's face. You're too friendly. Kirishima thinks it's the opposite, really. Bakugo's given him too many things he'd never give to anyone. He wraps his arms around Bakugo's waist, humming. Nah, I think it's because I've grown used to having you like this. You've made me greedy, Katsuki. Bakugo pauses, surprised. But then a smirk pulls across his face, pleased and deeply satisfied. Oh, he says lowly. All right, that's fine with me. Take all you want, then, Ejiro. So Kirishima complies and pulls him in for a kiss.